This is the podcast, not an interview. This is a conversation. No gimmicks, just reasons. 84 reasons. Come holler at me. Another installment of 84 Reasons. No games, no gimmicks. Just reason every week I sit down with a current, future, but more importantly, this week, former Florida Gators. My next guest, man. I don't know how to try to bet, try to do my best to introduce this man, former teammate of mine, one of my favorite teammates, wide receivers coach now at Baylor, New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Fine. Them boy, I gotta give out them where them boys from in Florida. They love where they from. <laughs> Seventh round draft pick in 2007 uh, by the Steelers, played for the Jacksonville Sharks, Montreal Alou- Alouettes, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, San Antonio Talons, coach at Wagner, Marshall, Buffalo, and Baylor, Super Bowl champ, BCS national champ, first team All SEC, got stats in the NFL, CFL, Arena League. If you want to know how to run a route, this man, he'll route you up and he'll tell you how to run it. Dallas Baker, the touchdown, making my boy DB. What's going on with you today, Dallas? <laughs> you silly. What's up, big bro? Man, before we even get into it, um, we was talking. We was talking before we came on about how we got introduced back in Florida. We we can't. We me and DB can't really tell y'all the ins and outs of what goes on when it comes to freshmen and sophomore. We'll we'll save that for the after <laughs> for the after hours. But DB, man, your story is one that. I'm always admired, you know, inspired by because I remember you coming to UF, leaving, coming back, doing your thing when you got back on campus. For 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 a lot of athletes who don't understand, sometimes, man, you can get on campus. It might not be the time for you to be here. What was that transition like coming on campus, leaving and coming back? Um, so I'll, I'll be honest, it it was it was hard, but it, it wasn't hard. So uh, actually what happened, so I graduated in 01 and I get to UF and yeah, my uncle played there. So we had someone had who had been at like a power five or whatever, but me and my family, we were still blind to how everything worked. And so I had, I didn't pass the ACT or SAT, but I had, I had good grades. And so I thought I was there to stay. And then like two weeks before uh, uh, school start, we're in fall camp and they come to tell me, hey, we're we're doing an appeal with the NCAA to see if you can stay here. I'm like, what? And so now I'm in training camp trying to learn the plays. This was spur year where, you know, like, come on, like those years there was like, had some dudes, everything. And so now I'm like, man, what's going on? And uh, they came to me. The, the first day of school, so I didn't even go to classes the first day. They told me to stay in the dorm. They come to me later that night, and uh, they tell me I, I can't be at UF. They tell me I have to leave. And so now me and my family trying to figure out where are we going to go, like what prep school. I have Fort Union, North Herman, like all these places I'm going to go, and I'll be honest, I didn't want to go to Fort Union, uh, and, and, and I didn't want to go to uh, – there was, there was one more, I think, hard grades. I'm, like, I'm not going to a military camp. So I chose NMH because it was, honestly, because it was a, a co-ed school. And they were selling me that they were going to let me play basketball and all this other stuff. And so I get there, to make a long story short, didn't take the SAT, ACT. I played football, basketball, and I was getting ready to run track. And I talked to Coach Odom Jr. I'm like, hey, I have not taken the SAT, ACT. Like, basically, I'm just getting the school notoriety. So he tells me to come back and see if my grades are good enough. And I go through the same process again. That's what people don't know. That when I got there in 02, I was on an appeal. And so my, my parents were praying and fasting and thank the good Lord. It was uh, Ashley who came and told me again, the last day of training camp. Okay, they said you could stay now. And I was like, thank the good Lord. She was like, but the thing is you're Prop 48. So that's why I had automatically red shirt too. So that, those first two years were rough. Wow, Prop 48 didn't really, I mean, because that, uh, for those who don't know, when it comes to that recruiting process, you still got the clearing house, 
You still got to have a certain GPA. You, you either do the SAT or the ACT, depending on, and it depends on, you know, what, what, uh, what your GPA is according to what you have to, uh, what you have to go out there and get. But I mean, that's a lot, DB, man. And for you just telling me that, number one, I mean, I judging by your personality, I couldn't tell that that was the case. I couldn't tell that, that was, that's what was going on with you because you had a type of personality that it didn't show. And I and and obviously we all deal with what we did when we in college, whether that's homesickness, not playing, it being overwhelming. But from what I from the time you came to the time you came back, you were the same dude. Like you know, as far as like, what do you attribute that to? Because you know how it is, DB man. All we want to do is play, you know, big time college football. You at Florida, all of a sudden they say, man, you got to go home. And you think I got to go home? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You thinking to yourself, wait a minute, man. Ain't nobody. T- I thought I did everything I'm supposed yeah. to do. Steve Spurgeon, I've been to my crib and asked my parents, can you know, do you want to be a gator? What that that what was that year like from from because Kiwan Rattler, for those who know Kiwan Rattler, he was one of the ones got there in 99, had to come back in 2000. You see what the career became, but what was that like that year in between trying to wait on your dream to come to the forefront? So uh what 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 when I like I said, it was hard, but what made it a little easier was I'm glad you brought that up. Was guys like Kiwan. So that day when everyone found out I was leaving and I was packing up my stuff, and before my parents came and got me the next morning, Rat was one of the ones that came to me and said, "Hey, the same thing happened to me. Just go and handle your business." And you know, we we talked and stuff like. So I did always have that in the back of my mind, like, man, Rat did it and came back, but. Here's what people don't know either. So I actually committed to South Carolina a month before signing day. Uh, and Coach Strong was recruiting me, him and a guy named Todd Finch. And I and my parents love Coach Holtz, love Coach Holtz. And so I committed to South Carolina. But then that same day, again, like I said, we were blind. We didn't know what was going on. That same day, I committed to the University of Florida, too. So it's like a major, major deal. It's like, man, how you commit to two schools? I'm like, man, nobody giving us the advice. But the reason why I'm saying that, because when they told me I had to leave, the first thing was on my mind, was like, man, I should have went to South Carolina. <laughs> I knew I should have went there. But I would say I give credit to Rat, guys like yourself, especially my family always tell me, like, hey, just have faith in God. And so that was really what it was, just – Knowing, like, man, I'm, I'm praying and I'm trying to make my work ethic match my prayers, and God gonna take care of everything. But I mean, that going to that prep school is really what helped me today. I would have to say so. Shout out in the It was just a bunch of stuff having to pick apples in the snow. Me playing basketball against at one point it's like 17 guys that had made it to the NBA. So it was just really uh. Uh, a learning experience and growth that I needed in our, uh, other areas. DB, the thing about you, man, that I always say that stood out was you had this energy about you, man. Like no matter, like no matter what, like no matter what went on, because I don't even want to know what it was like in the receiver rooms. Y'all boys had some of the most unique. I guess like y'all had unique personalities, but y'all had like a unique bond with each other. From myself, the kite, the Carlos. You know, the, I mean, you have a Rishi Caldwell, the Bubba Caldwell, the Chad Jackson, the Lewis. It was a lot of y'all. And but you were one of those rare dudes. You 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 almost played for three coaches. You got recruited by Spur, you played with Zook, and you ended up with Urban Mike. That's now that's about as unique as college football get. You are always I saw that you uh wished uh Urban Mike happy birthday, happy birthday, Coach Maya. You said Man, what he did for you, and I get it, man. When it comes to look, when it comes to Urban Meyer, it's always going to be a mixed bag, right? It all depending on who you're asking. If it's Ohio State, Jacksonville, but what he meant to you was different. Like, look, man, I can't speak for over there and over here, but when I had him, what did Urban Meyer do for Dallas Bay? So the first thing he did was he gave me confidence. Like that's the first thing between him. So the the, the main guy I have to. I have to give him credit where it's due. The main guy for that was Coach G. And Coach Meyer was close behind. Like, it's like almost 50-50 with them two. And then uh, I do have to say, you know, Coach uh, Muller. But for Coach Meyer, it was the confidence. Then it was the the dog. Like, the dog. Like, 
that's what people don't understand. Like, yeah, Coach Meyer, a great coach, but he's a great motivator. Like, he make you believe you could do anything. And then just, so I, I, I'll tell a, a quick story about him. Like, he helped me get into coaching. Like, this guy helped me so much. But I'll just show you what type of guy he is. So I'm going through this process of not being a coach. And I would go stay at Coach Meyer's house at his mansion. I had, like, my own room there. Like, he liked my dad. We, like, super close. And me and him having this conversation about the ins and outs of coaching, and he can't tell me everything. He's a feel. And then he tells me this story. He's like, I don't even know how we got on this story, but I always tell this because this really had me being like, man, my coach is amazing. So he says, when we play Arkansas in the SEC championship, Chris Lee comes to the sideline after we went three and out. And we ran a fake punt on, like, the 10-yard line, right? And that was with Jermail, and that was, like, the turning point of the game. But if you watch video, Chris coming to the sideline, and Coach Meyer is yelling at him like this, literally just moving his mouth and moving his hands. But by him doing that, what would that make Chris do? Throw his arms up, like, what are you doing? Well, to people that's watching it, here's what it looks like. It looks like he's yelling at Chris, and it looks like Chris is like, why are you yelling at me? And the reason why he's doing that, because he said head coaches usually don't watch the punt. They're usually trying to figure out why you went three and out. So if I'm watching the punt, then they would know we're doing a fake punt from the team. So I call Chris over, and I act like I'm yelling at Chris, and I just move my mouth, which makes Chris go like this. And then they feel like, okay, they are punting it, and we ran a fake on the team. We get it, and we go on to win the game. But that's the type of coach I had in Coach Meyer. <laughs> DB, I think that's very interesting because I always say Coach Spurry recruited me, and I always say Coach Spurry was the coach I chose. Uh, Ron Zook was the coach I needed. And a lot of times as players, we don't know what we need from a coach. We want them to pull the best out of us. We want them to help us become the best players, but we don't realize a coach has to deal with each player individually. Like what I tell DB, I can't tell another receiver, depending on the personality of that, of that guy. But when you look at everything you dealt with from him, Profit, Prop 48, I have to come back to school. To I should have went to this school. I, I committed to two schools at one time. And then people <laughs> see, first of all, SEC, national champion, Super Bowl champion, incredible. You know, now, you know, Rodney showing these receivers how to get right at the next level. Do you become a coach if, you, if anybody other than Urban Meyer is your mentor? Honestly, I, I I don't think so, and I can't give him all the credit. I think it's because I love Coach Fedor and Coach Zook and Coach Locks and all those guys. You know, they 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 allowed me to come back because they didn't have to do that because I was Spurrier class. You know, they could have easily been like, no. so they uh they they allowed me to come back and. You know, and they poured into me what they could. But when Coach Meyer and his staff came in, it's really what made me want to be a coach because just everything I had went through. And they just, they, they, they coached me hard. But one thing they did what made me want to be a coach, they loved me even harder. And so that's what made me want to be a coach because, you know, there's a bunch of young men, young girls out there growing up how I did, going through what I'm going through and even worse. And so I also feel like the reason why I'm flourishing because God gave me this platform to do that. So with all that tied in and with the good Lord, that's the reason why I want to be a coach. It has nothing to do with nothing else. I don't want the notoriety. I don't want the money. Like, shoot, I've turned down. I don't know if I should say it on here, but I said it now. Like, I've turned down multiple, multiple jobs. Shoot, I've turned down two big jobs this season. Because it's not about the money for me. As long as I keep being a person God wants me to be, I'm going to be fine. The voice you listen to right now is Dallas Baker, the touchdown maker, all S, first team all SEC, national champion. Got recruited by Spurrier, played with Zook, ended up with Urban Meyer. I always say this about Urban Meyer, right? and, and I know he would attest to this. 2006, 
the guy, I'm not talking about the whole team, but the key guys, oh, them Zook got Zook recruited every last one of them. Look, and look, and I always say this, DB, it's not little. I don't blame Spur. I mean, I don't blame Urban for saying, boy, I got some boys out here, right? But y'all had run through the gauntlet already, meaning by the time Maya got this, bro, I seen it all done at all. Now, I only thing left is the winning natty. Like, we've been through it, the highs and the lows, the ebbs and flows, but you got to be a headline in 2006. What people don't get about Division One football is everybody's talented. Everybody can't handle them lights. You just can't, like to play in, play out, <laughs> week in, week out. Yeah. What is it like to say, man, with everything I went through, boy, I get the line. When that, when that first 11, when, that, when the start 11 run out there, I'm running. I don't care if it's too tight. What was 2006 like? What was that team like for you, DB? Because at that point, you're saying, bro, I ain't worried about these DBs, man. I've impressed you, Urban. I've impressed you, Dan Mullen. I got Chris Lee. Let's go do it. So uh, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say I don't care who who like it, who don't like it. This is really what I what I feel. Uh, so that 06 team, I know they have us maybe third. They say 96, which those guys were dogs. 09, they talk about they're probably the best team. Uh, I would say it's the 01 Hurricanes. Hey, I'm just, like I said, I'm being honest today. But yeah, yeah. that 09 or 08, whichever one y'all want to say, and that 96 team, they have a hard time with us just because of what we've been through. And I feel like our mentality was different from all of those guys. Like, because of what we went through, like, think about it. Like, they wrote on the wall on 34, thanks, Baker, after the Tennessee game. I had to leave town, you know? Uh, <laughs> Just, <laughs> just all the stuff I had been through, like uh, on the back of the alligator, uh, y'all, your senior year, uh, where are they now? You yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. Having to walk through the set and be like, DB, they got you on the back of the page. And I'm 20 years old dealing with all this. That the But by the time we were seniors, that's why I was saying with Coach Meyer, like our mentality was different from everyone. It's like, I, I do brag about this. Big bro, I played with a broken rib and a punctured lung. So I broke my rib, I punctured my lung in Vanderbilt. That Saturday night, I was in the hospital to Tuesday. Wednesday, I just laid in the training room with Anthony Pass and those guys. Thursday, I went out and I watched practice. Friday, uh, they looked out for me. That's why I say they looked out for me on Friday. You know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. Gave me something, and I was able to run around. And Coach Meyer, the motivator he is, was like, wow, wow, this guy's really going to be – stop playing with me. You're really going to play. You know how he is. Dramatic, which made me feel like, dang, Coach, Coach, behind me, Coach, I like, surprised. And then Saturday, I went out there, and I played in the game. I was a second-leading receiver. So it was our mentality more than anything to where, like – it was going to be hard to beat us. I don't care who you were. So, yeah, that that was the big thing on that 06 team. And then I got to say how close we were, too. You know? Dallas, man, when you sitting there on the field, man, y'all know one and that. Like, you know, I mean, it, it's like th that's the ultimate, man. It, it, it's so many schools vying for this thing. Y'all did it. And that 06 team, I mean, that's the emergence of Tebow. You know, that's his freshman year. And, you know, obviously Chris Lee and all you, all these personalities. But when it when did it hit you though? You're like, dude, we just did it. Like, what you mean, like, bruh, like, we the last team standing. Like, we are whatever. And that goes back to you know spring expectations. Who is this Tebow kid? How they gonna work him into the offense? Who is this Percy? Kid? It's just so many names, right? But you would have started on see. See what gets lost in all this, right? We get lost in the in the pageantry of the names, right? Of what they become. But I go, so when I'm watching, I'm saying, listen, man, that's DB out there. Meaning, I remember young DB going back and forth with Gus Scott all the time. Like, bro, I'm gonna say something to you all. I listen, you got to I, listen, for people who don't know, you got to walk around with a full clip of Florida. And I ain't talking about no gun. The jokes are on display 100 percent of the time. We were so proud of you, DB, man, because we know we know the person. And I'm going to get into the bloodline for those of you who don't know about this Baker bloodline. But when it when did it finally hit you, man? We just won the whole thing. 
Not on the field. Uh, I would say the locker room, and I'll be honest, I think about it sometimes. Like, uh, what was it? Last Thursday. For some reason, like, he, so he's like my dad, and we, we talk a bunch. It's out of him and Coach Meyer, but uh, Coach G. And for the first time, even when I was playing for him, we talked for an hour and 47 minutes. So I, I even showed my wife. And uh, we were just talking about our squad and the receivers. And that's what made me think about it even more. But when I got in the locker room, like you said, I got tough skin. So I'm one of those people that I hold a bunch inside that it's almost like a glass. Like you get to the point overflow. And I remember Coach Meyer, he had Chris because he was MVP. Uh, I think it was D. Harv. I'm getting old, but I think it was Dehar who went defensive MVP. They came up. He had me say something, but when I came up and I got ready to say something, I just started crying. And it was just because of, for me, it's like, yeah, we won an national championship, but it's what Coach Mark Campbell was trying to tell us, like, yeah, I'm not going to be together forever. And I remember looking at Percy and Bubba, Toots, Jamel, like all those guys, and I was just like, dang. That's it. It's like Coach Aranda, our head coach, that's how, what he talks about when they won the last championship at LSU, you see the confetti and it's like, that's it. You know, it's like, man, we won, but I wish we had another game. I wish I had another year. Like, if they told me you guys not going to the national championship next year, but depending on how the season go, we don't know, but you're not going to the national championship, would you come back? I would have came back. That's how close we were. That's my mentality. So, yeah, I didn't realize we really did. We got in the locker room. I saw you. We I saw uh, when uh, Coach Mullen first came back. He had a lot of guys come speak to the team. I remember you were standing in front of him, and you was getting choked up because it hits you all at once. Because you're saying, "Dude, I was one of these dudes." Like, because when you're doing it. You feel it, but you're so used to the day in, day out, you don't understand it. But now, because it's a, it's, a, it's a bunch of former players. There's a bunch of us, a bunch, a bunch of incredible, talented players. When you standing up in front of those guys, what hits you? Because I see you talking, you like, man, this dude right here. Because sometimes, listen, I saw Kevin Carter stand up there. That guy got 100 sacks, Super Bowl, right? Played with Kevin Carter when I was with the Titans, uh, you know, uh, and the Bucks. When people say, and you won a Super Bowl with them Steelers, man, like you you went to the pinnacle in the league. But when people say, ain't nothing like Gainesville, man, ain't nothing like, what hit you when you sitting there talking to him, DB, to make you get all choked up? I mean, I saw you. I said, yeah, I said, that boy about to do it. He, he, he ain't going to make it. <laughs> uh, so there, there, there was two things. And I actually tell my receivers now that really was able to motivate me. And – Coach Mullins, um, Coach Mullins, and, and I know it come from Coach Meyer, but the staff would always talk about, do you want to do something where you're able to show your kids, like, hey, look what daddy accomplished with his teammates. Um, and then his staff would always talk about, do you want to be the guys? And I, I think they do it at Ohio State because, you know, Coach Meyer was there. Do you want to be the guys to change college football? And I'll be honest, when he used to be like the whole staff, you know what I'm saying? That's why the staff was good, because they would just reiterate what he would say. At first, true, I'll be honest, we used to be like, change college football. There's no way anybody gonna change college football. They just making us work out at 10 o'clock at night until no lie, until 1:30 in the morning, six times in the summer. They just like doing this to us. But when, when, when we look at it, when we won that national championship and how hard we worked, the SEC, and I brag about this again, and I argue to I'm blue in the face, nobody was talking about the SEC. We won that national championship, and the SEC had a national championship every year since then. It started with us in 06. People started taking their players out to eat. People started having their players over to their house. A lot of stuff that we did in 06, all the way into 2009, you start seeing other colleges do that. 
And so it's like, hey, we were one of the first ones to do that. And so when I was standing there talking to the team and I saw Coach Mullen and I saw Coach G and then my wife and my daughter is there and then everybody treated my daughter like she was a princess. Not, not to make the interview long, but treating her like she was a princess, but bro, because daddy was a, was a good player, a great player, whatever you want to say, but daddy was also a yes sir, no sir. So everybody is like, taking her around this building, or treating her like this, until I ask her, are you, you ready? I'm just starting a conversation with my daughter. I'm like, you, you ready to go to, this is before I talk. I'm like, you ready to go to Disney World tomorrow? She's like, no, I want to stay here for another day. And I'm just like, dang, that's what they were trying to tell me. Like, because of what I accomplished and how I treated people, you know, like, like they had to give me a glass of water one day, so treating everyone with respect. They got my daughter wanting to be in Gainesville more than go to Disney World. And so when I saw them, all that just hit me at once. And I'm like, thank the good Lord, you know, that I listened because I could have been defined and look where we at. So. No, they, they treat, they treat, they treating your daughter like what her daddy is. You football royalty at Florida. It's almost like they know who you are. They just hope it's like this. When you that guy, it's easy when you walk up to them. They want to come to you. But when you walk, hey man, I'm Dallas Baker. They like this. We know who you are. So when they see little mama, right, they saying, listen, that's what you're going to remember about them. Oh, yeah, when I met him, and I remember when he took my daughter. They they smart enough to know, man, how do I create a memory right now with Dallas? They had to think, how do I know? I'm at Florida speaking uh, to the team one time. My youngest daughter, Yaya, was with me. That's when Felipe Franks was really, I think he was a, I think he was a freshman then, getting ready to try to take on the ring when McElwain was the head coach. She's sitting there. She don't know nobody. She, my, my daughter's young. She, she young at the time and she young now. But I mean, it's like, I think she was around six at the time, five, six years old. And at the end, I just got everybody in the room to say, you know, uh, hey, yeah, yeah. I said, everybody said, hello, yeah, yeah. They're like, hello. And she's high five. She don't know these people, right? But you also realize, DB, they don't got to do that. Like, they don't have to say, hello, yeah, yeah, because I said. They don't, they don't got to take your daughter around because you there, but it's the respect they have for you because they saying, bro, he did it. All of us want to be remembered, man. It's certain, listen, you can be the most, I have no ego in me. I have no pride in me. That don't mean that I don't want to be remembered. If it, it makes you feel good to walk in the room, they saying, you Dallas Baker, right? Like, yeah, because that means that it's something about you. Like I had a coach tell me, boy, you on somebody's wall. Somebody got your picture up on their wall. They ain't going to tell you, though. They ain't going to tell you you on their wall. They just go, if I'm ever in his presence or her presence, I'm going to say something to him. I hope they give me something to remember me by, because football players don't really ask for autographs from other ones. We don't really do that. We Sometimes we do. He go, there go little mama. Okay. I'm going to just grab her by the hand and take her around. Because she don't really know who you are because you her dad. She don't get it. But when they go, no, this is your dad. They're like, what? Yeah, like, when we walk through the football facilities, that's when they just got the indoor. They just got the indoor facility. We up there in the football offices, and the football offices used to be right above us. I don't, you got to find them now. You got to have a GPS to find them offices now. My daughter says, Daddy, look, it's you. When I look, and they got me with the Gator Grace with the tight ends. Now, mind you, I, you know, I appreciate this stuff, man. I don't, I'm like you, DB. I don't need it. That meant something to her. That's my daddy right there. Because they weren't they, they weren't allowed to see us play. At least my daughter wasn't. So, but you did it, DB. But now, when she go back wherever y'all live and people get to talk, because she's going to she gonna have to live in that Dallas Baker's daughter. My daughter plays soccer now. And she'll say, people say you only good because your daddy was a professional athlete. I said, that's not true. Just tell them you got the bloodline. That don't mean you're going to be it because daddy was that. But... Man, when I saw you catch that one hand, I can't remember who y'all was playing against, man. And you caught that one hand in the back of the end zone, man. I said, DB rocked that boy. I said, he I said, DB about to hit him with a slant and go. He gonna, he gonna, boy, he gonna sell that slant. He gonna about to stop running. I'm just gonna stop. When that DB take one step, I'm gone. I done took off. I say that to say this, DB. You a receivers coach. Steph Curry got everybody shooting from half court now because they think they him. What is it about the receiving receiver position, man, that's so special? Because the rest of us is in here. Y'all out there, it's just you and him. What is what is that battle like knowing, hey, bro, 
you're going to see me all game. I hope you follow me. I ain't going to talk. I don't know if DB talk a lot with it, but what does that receiver position mean to you now that you're coaching it, but you also, you know, had a PhD in that route running, man? So it's hard to explain to people, but first I'll say being a receiver and coaching receivers is different. We're, we're, we're just different. Like mentality, uh, you have some that's the prima donnas, you have some that's tough as nails, but we're all we're all just different. But I would say the one thing about the receiver position that people may not pay attention to is they're they're a little they're not all the way there up there because they love pressure. Like yeah. You gotta it's third and six. We gotta convert this or the game is over. And the quarterback gets to get the ball from the center, which is this far away. The quarterback is throwing the ball to you. You have to trust this defender. You have to make sure you make this catch, and you have to basically secure the catch. It's just all of that that makes it be like put the game back. And so that's the big thing about playing a receiver position is that there's a there's a saying pressure bust pipes, but as a receiver, we always be like pressure make diamonds. So for for me, that's the the big thing, just enjoying the pressure, loving pressure. You know, I'm always uh I'm always I always make sure that if you are part of that that bloodline at Florida, I make sure I give you guys your flowers like Willie Jackson. Willie Jackson, senior and junior, Terry Jackson, they they sister Ashley that was there when we was there to play, even though she, her last name was Moore, she's still a Jackson, you know, in yeah. my mind. And you start, but when I think about football royalty, when I think about the pouncings, you know, when they came through. But see, DB, you you good to keep it secrets. You know, you, you don't talk about the family bloodline at all. When you first came on, you said my uncle yeah. was at Florida. What he felt, his uncle, his, his uncle name was Wes. Chandler, that that that's the uncle he's talking about. Yeah, him. Yes, they got different last names, but they come from the same bloodline. But even bigger than that, for those of you saying, what about the international scale? Well, you got a brother named Perry that that, that played rugby in the Olympics. When I say this, that when I say when you come from that type of family, though, man, because your your uncle had his legacy, right? And you did not say, look, I'm not trying to live in his legacy. You you had your own, but your brother. Represented the United States of America in rugby. What is it like coming from a family like that, man? Because your daughter, she's gonna be like, I already got to hear about my great uncle, man. Now I got to hear about my daddy. Now I got to hear about my other uncle, man. I'm tired of these dudes, man. I'm sick of all of them. Coming from a family like that, man, it's got to make you proud, man. Yeah, but it keeps you 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 humble, which is gonna <laughs> I'm contradicting myself when I say this. I'm not being arrogant, but it, it was more than just me, my brother, my uncle. So uh, all of us really grew up at my grandmother's house on uh, on uh, Howard Street. So if you ever see us, hashtag Howard, it's like us basically saying, remember where we come from, like if we post something with our family. And so, uh, of course, my, my mom, I had my dad, like, but saying like my grandmother, had my uncle Wes, and so my uncle Wes made sure that my grandmother didn't work, and so we were all just piled up at her house, right? And so it was me, my brother, uh, my cousin Latarius Tom, which was on the the Orange Bowl team that played Wake Forest. He was a star in safety, a true freshman who spent time with the Colts, uh, and then we also had Daryl Dixon who we all grew up together, which was right there. And then uh, my uncle, which was my grandma brother, he had a son that was named Henry Thomas that was on the national championship team as a walk-on. And so growing up, you couldn't be arrogant because it's like, you're not doing nothing that nobody else haven't done. <laughs> and so that helped me be humble and then not to be all over the place, but I got to put this in there, right? So then when I get to UF, the reason why I'm like that, I got to be humble because I had you guys that made me stay humble. Like you said, like you had that thick skin. Like y'all was going to make fun of my teeth, my edge up, 
But I got to give credit where it's due. And that 2000 class is the reason why me being a captain in that receiver room for two years and now me being the coach I am, building that brotherhood, is because what I saw out of your 2000 class, like you, OJ, Gus, Kiwan, Kite, Los, Dowdy, uh, trying to make sure I'm not leaving anybody out, but you guys were so close. And our 02 class, we would see that and we would be like, man, these guys do everything together. And the beautiful thing was y'all started inviting us over. And this is a, this this is really how it went down. Y'all invite us over and y'all would have cookouts. Y'all let us hang with us and y'all would cook for us. Like Rand Carthon, that the when I was a prop 48, I couldn't eat at the training table. I couldn't eat at the calf because I had to pay for everything. That's what people didn't know. And Rand would would, would cook for me sometimes. And that's why I called him Big Bro, and that's why we cook. But it was stuff like that. So when you guys left and y'all would still come back, me too, Bubba. Jamel, Chad Jackson, Gavin Dickey, like all those guys that was in the receiver room, we would talk about, like, you guys, like, y'all were superheroes, you know? And, like, even, that's why I said, me doing this interview with you is like, man, like, you, like, I could be 60, I'm going to still call you big bro because y'all taught us how to work. Y'all, man, like, y'all taught us everything. You didn't. Dude, you didn't even know any better. You were what a year older than me, and here it is. No, and you know what's crazy, DB? We 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 I'm I'm a I'm a I think I'm a I was born eighty two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying so, and, and but but what happened? My my but my birthday is September first, so I was supposed to wait a whole year before I register school, but they let me register the day of. That's the only reason why I graduated in two thousand. I would have been a two thousand one graduate as well but what happened was with y'all db no no this is what it really is though y'all made it easy to do right by y'all y'all made it so because you know how it is we don't we we trying to see who is about themselves or who's about the score and it's easy to figure out in college right gus was the joke gus joked on every everybody could get it coach Spurrier, the only one that probably didn't get it everybody else got it right but Gus used laughter to love you. That's how he used it. He, you know, because we ain't gonna just come out and say, "Man, I love you, boy." Because that, that's how he used it, and you, and he let you know how much he loved you by how much he would. Because you mentioned Jamel. Jamel could not get away from Gus. He <laughs> Lee, theatric. They could not get away from Gus, right? Yeah. But Gus was a hell of a football player too. See. <laughs> He said, look, bro, I can't be this way away from football and not handle my business. So, and listen, I love Marquand Emanuel. Mark, Eminem was my dude. If Eminem wasn't an upperclassman over Gus, he wouldn't have started over him. But he had already been there. But I also, but what y'all also did for us was this. Any selfishness we had in us, y'all y'all took it from. Like, we had to get that stuff out of us, man. Because what y'all didn't hear was coaches saying, look, bro, even if you don't play, he needs you. Even if you ain't getting out there, he needs you. Because, you know, it's 85 guys, man. Sometimes it's a numbers game. Everybody ain't going to play. It ain't because you better than him. It's because I've been here longer. But, no, man, DB, you and Toops and y'all, man, I used to hear so much about Toops over there on that, uh, when he, before he really got the plan, like on offense, he was over there with Gus and them, routing, gussing them up over there. But I will say, man, when I saw y'all win, you particularly in 06, man, it brought a tear to my eye because I said, this dude really stood the course. And I know we in the transfer portal era now. People think people going to just jump in it. You said, no, nah, bro. I done went through too much. It's now it's my time. You mentioned OJ. Me and OJ was roommates our freshman year when we first, you know, got to Florida. He was the first team all SEC. Led the SEC in receptions. You know, his senior year. It's like people only, people only see – the end result, they don't see what it took or what it takes to do it. One thing about you, though, DB, man, man, when you started, you know, with the jokes and all that comes, when you started coming back at dudes, they wasn't ready for that. Because the guys that came behind you, like, bro, if you went, listen, if you went 03, 04, you ain't got a shot with me, bro. Gus yeah. Scott could have been a comedian. This dude would not let it, but, but, but this thing about Gus, though, that people don't get. When I first get to college, man, I got a, Two guys. I got a I got a I got a size of my head complex. I, I had a big head my whole life, right? <sighs> Gus got see me, man. 
Now, thank God OJ Small had the funny shaped head you ever seen. Thank God his, and we ruined, <laughs> and we roommates, right? <laughs> you know, OJ had them handlebars on his head. It's just crazy stuff, right? <laughs> I, I had to get past this complex. So Gus, every day, hey, true, man, and we, and we captains, heads or tails. Uh, 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 ring ding dong, you know, uh, keep your heads ringing with the Dr. Dre song. Uh, true gonna be a head start teacher, right? But then, first year, they make you cut your hair, right? We go up in the locker room the next day, I had cut. Rand Carthon walk up to me, lift, and he can't even lift. He like, boy, what's wrong with you? I'm like, nothing. Like, what, what, what? I don't even know if he lifted that day. Those Gus and Rand helped me embrace me. They don't realize that's what they did for me. And those are the things that. I used to tell people about you. I said, listen, don't let that DB smile fool you, boy. He kills DB. His name is DB, and he don't like him. You put him in front of him. The, <clears throat> listen, my, my, my best day as a Gator is when they call that unsportsmanlike conduct on you and not the DB at Tennessee. I said, what? and the, I said, the ref is looking at two dudes. Wait a minute. The ref is looking at two guys. They went unsportsmanlike conduct. I saw you go like this. They go, number 81. I said, man, I'm about to burn this TV up, <laughs> right? But, DB, before I let you out of here, man, look, with everything that Dallas Baker has done, man, and you've accomplished a lot from NFL champion, college football, national champion, arena football, you were ball, uh, Canadian football, now you a coach, husband, father, son, uncle, hashtag Howard. What is Dallas Baker's most – proud moment at this it's, it's plenty to choose from what is what is your proudest moment up to this point um, so i gotta say second gotta put that out there be a, a husband or father but i would say the number one thing and it's what helped me in life is uh being a christian and follow god you know just like how i even got to this point to coaching at baylor you know, it's nothing but the grace of God. And that's why I always talk with God, about God because all I accomplished isn't so I could talk about how great I am and that stuff. It's so I get this big platform to tell people how great God is and talks about in the Bible. All it takes is one. If I can get one person to know who God is, I've done my job. And so for me, that's the, the thing I'm proud about is my relationship with God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. He is Dallas Baker, the touchdown maker. Now we got new Smyrna Beach. Hashtag Howard out there, you know, Baylor out there, out, out there in RG3 country. You know, out there with them, with that, with them, uh, them John Deere looking green and gold jerseys on. DB, let me tell you something, man. I'm proud of you, man, because I probably, probably listen, Coach Fedora, when he was at North Carolina, got to go speak there. Walked in the office, he said, "True, I'm just happy to see you. Not the not the former player that I coach. I'm happy to see the man you became because coaches can't really tell us that stuff when they coaching us, right? They can't really tell us like, man, I want this boy to win in life, not in football. You winning in life, man. And like I said, I ain't seen you in a long time, man. I know I, all I see is you telling them boys, boy, you got to." You got to get you got to get those hands off you to get back in this route. All right, well, you won't be out there then. Cause I got coached by some of the, the listen, the best players and the best coaches had one thing in common. They both got coached by the best coaches. If I became a great coach, I had great coaches. If I was a great player, I had great coaches. But the ones that could, cause when I see Coach Locks in Maryland and you know, I know that uh Coach Fedor, I think he's um in the XFL now, what he's doing now, and all these different guys. I get to say that I was a part of that, man. I get to say that, man, at one point, man, when we had no hair on our face, Coach <laughs> yelling at him, saying, Dallas Baker, if you don't, you're like, Coach, I'm, but I will say, I'm, I'm proud I'm proud to call myself a, a teammate of yours, man, because you one of them ones, DB. You showed, listen, most of us, if we go to college and they tell us we can't come, we can't stay, we ain't coming back. We, we ain't coming back. You was like, all right. Show me what I got to do. Came back. Then when I get here, I got the. Then when I get here, I got the red shirt. All right. But then by the time you met Urban, you was like, "Hey boy, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for you." Because I didn't. I because I had to go through Ron Zook. And for those of you who don't know, Ron Zook, boy, that joker don't play the radio, people. That joker keep it one hundred. No, no, no. Take one hundred and put another hundred on top of it. That Ron Zook said. 
Sleep is a waste of time. You just have to do it. It's a waste of time. But you got to get your rest. He, I am here, true. He is Dallas Baker. This is the latest installment of 84 Reasons. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. DB, boy, I keep doing what you're doing, man. I'm going to have to get out there. I don't know what Baylor at. I know it's in Texas. I'm going to have to get out there and holler at you. Yeah, man, you got to come. And I got to I gotta talk about them, bro. Uh, it's a special place. Special, special place. The guy, Coach Aranda, makes it even greater. Coach Grimes, the OC. Like, those two, man, I could have played for both of those guys, bro. Like, yeah, you got to come out there and meet them. You got to see what Baylor got to offer, man, because it's more than just football like other places. So. Florida, listen, Florida boys in Texas, them boys out there, Florida, Florida's everywhere. I mean, I got to say before I let DB go, DB thinks that he represents the best state when it comes to high school football. They're number two. Georgia is number one. I don't care what DB says. I don't care. We're, we're number one. They're number two. <laughs> DB like, what are you tripping? What? No, nah, yeah. I, I have to say that all the time. Every time I – because, listen, Florida boys like one thing more than like anything else. They rep where they from. That man's hashtag Howard. I'm going to make sure I start putting that whenever I see a DB. Uh, uh, you know, hashtag, hashtag Howard. Hashtag the touchdown maker. Hashtag a hell of a human being. Well, I love you, boy. Be good, boy. Bro, thank you.